Our next caller is Aaron from New York. Hey, Aaron. Good morning, uh, Aaron. What's your question? Hi. So my question is, um, what is the best way to deal with a manager at my gym that programs not great group classes? Oh, um, God. <laughs> a lot of cardio with weights, high intensity. I want to be the best coach for my clients, but I'm pretty limited with how much I can change in the class. Okay. Oh, so so wow. you're so you're a trainer there. Wow. This is a landmine. Yes. So this is this was me at Orange Theory. Yeah, this is me at Orange Theory. Do you totally. do you teach group classes there as well, or do you just train people one on one? I train group classes. That's where I started with, and now I also train people one on one. Now, mm. do you have the the autonomy from the owner to run your classes the way you want? Yes, kind of on the back end. He he knows I change things, and uh, he's all right with that. But I haven't been given complete like uh, do whatever kind of. It's also hard because I work a full-time job, so I'm already training people one-on-one. -on -one. It's hard for me to do a whole group class change when I should just be able to kind of go in. You know what I mean? Yeah, so this is like uh, very close to home for me. So I, I don't know if you know this, but when we first started Mind Pump, I was also helping my buddy Brendan uh, start up the first Orange Theories in the Bay Area. And if, if you've been listening to the podcast long enough, you obviously know my stance on group training. Yet here I am teaching a group training class. <laughs> So this was the same exact dynamic now. And luckily, uh, Brendan sounds like your boss where he gave me the, some freedom and, and latitude to kind of, m you know, mold or change some things that I really didn't like in the group class, but I still had to somewhat follow their protocol, which was still challenging for me. Right. So right. what I, what I started to do was the last five minutes or so of the class, I started to turn into like, I would teach like one thing. And of course, I was trying to teach something related to what the problems that I'd see in the class. For example, uh, when you're in a, a class setting like that, uh, you know, and you're, it's supposed to be you're trying to be building strength. Uh, clients tend to, you know, no rest periods. They go right in the next one, right in the next one, right in the next one, and they just they don't they don't rest and gather themselves and then go to the next weight uh, at an ordinary. And so that would be like a topic of the day is the importance of of rest periods for building strength and not just doing cardio with weights or I might pick out an exercise that I saw everybody doing incorrectly and, I, and they're doing it incorrectly because they have mobility issues. And so I might talk about the importance of ankle and hip mobility when we're squatting down and why some people will lean forward or they'll feel it in their knees or their hips. I would just like pick one thing a day that I would teach after my class. And my classes became very popular for that because I wasn't just teaching the group class. I'd always give this, this bit of of information and education surrounding uh, the group that was in there. And that's what kind of allowed me to still be able to implement my philosophy and the things that I thought were important and the things that I th saw wrong in the group training while also still being a group training coach at the same time. Yeah. The other thing too, Aaron, is uh, if, you, if you have the flexibility to kind of teach the classes the way you want to, then the best thing you could do is teach the classes the way you want to and get those classes to fill up. If your gym manager sees that you are successful and you're bringing in members and people value you, that gives you a lot more power because I think the gym manager is yep. probably going to be quite interested uh, or at least they have a strong interest in having a successful facility. So if Aaron's classes are the ones that are filling up, if Aaron's members are, are constantly asking about her. If everybody else is saying, I want to do that class, mm. you've got a lot more uh, influence. And I know that's what happened to Adam. That's, exa that's exactly how yeah. it went down. Yeah, I know. It started off with little bits of me teaching, and then eventually I got all the freedom. And then I started to completely change the format. I changed the total, how the, I look at what they had for me to teach for the day, and very little of it would stay on, on the routine. But I, I had to get to that point. I had to first you know, introduce a little bit of, of my philosophy of, around what they're teaching and without insulting the business, right? And slowly do that. And then once it got to a point where I had so many people waiting for my class, the, the bosses pretty much went, okay, we're not going to let Adam do his mm -hmm. thing. We're, we'll make everybody else follow this thing, but let him do his thing because he's our, our number one coach. So that should be your goal is to give, don't change too much to where you end up pissing everybody off. Try and add more value to that class by adding the things that you see that you don't like about group training, right. uh, but don't do it in a way that you're you're putting down, you know, the boss or other people. Do it in a way that you're just adding more value to your class, mm -hmm. and eventually you'll be known as that that coach that's going mm -hmm. that extra mile, and then you have more freedom. Plant plant those seeds for sure, and also if you can make yourself available, 
uh, you know, outside of that to then kind of have that interventional type of, uh, you know, mobility practices and like more furthering their, their information with how they can like help their joints. Uh, you could even start wrapping, you know, two clients together and like taking them through like actual, uh, you know, priming and, and, and ways that they can actually, uh, you know, add some longevity to these type of workouts. So that this is great, Justin, what you just said. So Aaron, I don't know, have you seen the maps prime pro webinar that we did? Yeah. So actually I have to thank you guys for every, all of your content. So quick background on how I found you guys is because the owner approached me to do the group classes. And then I quickly took on more responsibility and I had no idea what I was doing. So I was searching for information, found you guys, found the podcast, found the YouTube, and I have almost every program now. And that's what I use um, for my one-on-ones. And I try to do priming like as we warm up. And I think I've been able to provide a lot of value because of that. And I just want to thank you guys so much for providing all your content. Hell yeah, that a girl. So what Justin was just alluding to was actually one of the things I also started to do with the class. So again, instead of uh, asking the bosses, can I completely change your your format? I said, Would, could we add a, a day? And I did it on Saturdays for one hour. And it was on a time that they weren't using the, the classroom. And I started to offer all, everyone that took my classes to come see me on Saturdays for this mobility class. And I, would, I offered my service for free so I could teach them and educate them. And before long, that class became so full. And that was it, all I was teaching was the Maps Prime Pro webinar, basically. So those, all those mobility moves, I'd do that for like an hour with them. And I'd be talking to them while I'm teaching them. So I'm teaching these moves and I'm telling them, this is why this is so important for you to do this. This is why your knees hurt or your hips hurt or your back hurts when you take these classes and you go in circuits. This is why I'm always trying to teach you guys to slow down and work on your form and your core. And so I can, you, it allowed me to like really educate while also, you know, taking through a great mobility class. Um, that's a good way to approach the boss instead of, again, trying to get him to completely change what he's doing offer your services outside of the the time that they're using start to try and fill that class up with the people that you're already teaching build some interest that's right okay okay all right well aaron thank you very much well, for calling in thank you guys merry christmas you merry, too. Christmas. merry christmas christmas yeah, yeah, I, I mean, could totally relate to that. Oh, one. dude, when, oh, I mean, here's totally. the deal. I managed gyms for a long time. If I had somebody in my gym that was working for me that was different than I was, mm -hmm. but they were bringing in members, providing value, their classes were full. It's undeniable. I'm gonna be okay the, the with key, it. The key, though, the hard part though, and where she's at is that transition. Yes. yes, it's it's not. It's when you when you're taking when you're teaching it, and you know that. You, you 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 would teach it differently or you're not happy with the format. You got to be calculated with Exactly. You, yep. you can't just go like I'm going to run it differently. Right. No, because there's no evidence then yet. Then you're going to get yes. pushed back immediately. Yeah, you got to and that's why I mean the way I did it was by just adding more value to what we were already currently doing to to gain that trust from my members. Totally. And then offered a free service on top of that and then before long it was like okay, now everybody was yeah. and then it was really easy. Now it's like Adam, what are you doing? How can Yeah, we, why is why is Adam's classes booked out 2 months and the next coach is Maybe, Maybe we should incorporate this. Right, right. 